I accidentally stumbled into a pool room one day. I kind of had a crush on my brother's best friend, so my girlfriend and I followed him up there. I was 14, playing a lot of And this of is in sports. Sweden? This is in Sweden, yeah. And the name of the town in Sweden? I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Go Javle. ahead. Javle. Yeah. Okay, now where in Sweden is this? Where it's places? It's a two-hour drive north of Stockholm, All right. in the Baltic Sea. All right, so yeah. you've got a crush on someone, and yeah. does this other someone play pool? Um, they just kind of hung out there once in a while, played a little pool, you know, bowled a little. They were all um, athletic. You know, they were they were playing soccer and hockey, and so did I. And uh, when I walked in, they had a beautiful pool room up there, as it just turned out, one of the nicest ones, if not the nicest one in Sweden. And um, they had, um, I think, 14 Brunswick Gold Crown tables in there, perfect lighting. And I walked in and went, "Wow, this is this is really cool. Never seen it, never heard a pool in my life before." And I uh, played a couple of times and became instantly obsessed with it. And I knew I came home after the second time that I played. I told my parents, this is what I want to do. Just to fast forward so that people understand, I mean, you're a champion. You have won the Women's uh, Professional Billiards Association Championship. Uh, you have traveled all around the world uh, in doing this. Uh, did you ever think that you would be the queen of pool? Or I know that your nickname is uh, the striking Viking of pool. Yeah. That's the whole Swedish thing. No, I mean, you don't set out to, to go, I want to be a star or I want to be, you know, somebody who changes the game or a legend and anything. I mean, you set up, you, you play because you love it. Um, and then all this other stuff, winning championships and uh, getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, um, making a, a change in the sport, that's something that kind of comes as you're doing what you already love to do. What is the sport of pool? Tell us a little bit about the individual games and the scoring and so on. How can people learn more? Well, I mean, you have three different major games in the world. You have snooker, which is a, a very old game, um, kind of a, derived from the same background as golf. Um, and that's mainly played in the UK. Um, and then you have what's called three cushion billiards, and that's a table with no pockets. And you play with two white balls and a red ball. It's a little bit different um, how you score points. And then you have what we play mostly here in the United States, where if you go to, to black and you see the Brunswick tables, this here um, is a regular standard nine foot tournament size pool table. Obviously, something that you can find in somebody's home, but this is played either eight ball or nine ball or a game called straight pool, which is the most common. Describe the strategy, some of the planning that goes on in your head, because I understand that it's physics and geometry on the table, but to a certain point, this is about thinking one shot, two shot, many shots ahead. It is. It is literally like the game of chess in the sense that you do play ahead. Usually, if, the, if it's a pretty, pretty open table, I will think three to four balls ahead. If everything is wide open, you initially look, I know where all nine balls are going to go. Now, obviously, you may have to adjust a little bit if you get out of line with the cue ball and, and kind of come up with plan B. But, yeah, you really, you really do think ahead. Is, is one of the ways you do that by trying to introduce uh, the sport, the, the sport of pool, to as many people as possible, particularly outside of, let's say, the United States or Europe? Uh, I know that Asia is a big area where pool is getting to be very popular, particularly among young women, young girls. Yeah, it's gone crazy over there. Well, for me, it's always been a very important part of, of my life because when I played pool in Sweden, nobody really said, I can't believe you're playing. What kind of a you know, nice girl like you doing in a sport like this type of thing? I mean, there was no reference to uh, the Hustler movie no, or Jackie was, Gleason or Paul Newman. It didn't have that like connotation. Here. Not at all like it was when I, when I landed here at 17 and everybody's going, oh, I can't believe you're playing you know, pool. And then I had my daughter pretty young and the other parents were kind of going like, and it, was, it would just drive me crazy because to me it's the most beautiful game there is. So I couldn't quite understand. Okay, so there was a movie called The Hustler, why does everybody think that, you know, everybody's a Minnesota Fats type, you know? So I went, that's kind of strange. So um, one of the things I set out to do was to try to change that image. And fortunately for me, that's always been the image that, that Brunswick has had. So when they asked me to represent them, um, I believe you're the only, some play, years the only ago. player representative. Yes, and I've been with this since 1988. And um, that was kind of when my life changed from going from the passion and love to 
actually doing this for a living. But it also gave me the luxury of kind of having a plateau to, come, to speak from. I became the president of the Women's Professional Billiard Association. So from there, you know, was able to, we, we got secured a contract with sponsors with Indian industry, secured a contract with ESPN, and we got our tour televised um, with no men's um, tour being televised by the way, I'd add that in there. <laughs> so well, that was just, a huge deal for us, huge And, and explain deal also us. that there was a, a, a situation in which because you retained the rights to the uh, video of mm -hmm. uh, the championship right. outside the United States, right. that is something that then was able to let you build a business. Exactly. So we sold the rights to, to Europe to Star Asia, to different areas, so it was shown a lot over there, and um, the popularity has just gone insane, especially with women. It's, it's pretty amazing how popular, and men as well, but the, the female side of the sport outside the United States as well has gone just crazy. When you think of pool right now, what would you like to see happen in, let's say, the next five years? Well, I mean, a thing that's really close to my heart is is the, the people having a table in their home. You know, I see with with all my friends and kids and my my kid and daughter, and is instead of just sitting in front of the television playing again, it's the greatest family game. If you can't be outside throwing a football or going for a run or whatever, and you're inside, there's no better way to to get together than to get together around the pool table. And uh, so that one has become pretty interesting. Um, the, uh, we have a, uh, an outlet called Brunswick Game On, and it's a, it's a website where you can go on and learn about the game, and I have a lot of videos on there to kind of show how you can teach your kids a trick shot. Is there something about the green do you recall throughout your career, not that it's over at all, but I mean that you remember that the green itself create some feeling inside you? Yeah, there's kind of a piece there. A lot of times we use blue now because it shows up better on television. But to me, this is what a, a pool table should look like. You know, that, that warm green color that's, that's, you know, it's kind of, it puts you in that, in that place. And that's one of the things that I thought was sexy when I first walked into that pool room in, the, in my hometown in, in Sweden was, it's kind of a darker room with these lights over the table, so it's kind of a stage with the balls and the green cloth and everything, and then that's part of what hooked me, I think. You know, I couldn't let billiards champion Ava Lawrence get away without showing me some of the skills that have made her the best in the world. And after we spoke, uh, we had what you can call a pool party, perhaps. <laughs> The main thing is that when you're down shooting and when you're at a dress, mm -hmm. is that this arm is straight up and down. So if the cue, if the cue is too short, for instance, and you're holding it back here, you don't want to, you know, have that adjusted so you can have a nice smooth follow through. I'd say to people, don't hold the cue. You cradle the cue. Cradle the cue. Yeah, the cue does all the work. As you can see, I don't hold anything. All I'm doing is steering it back and forth, letting the cue kind of do the work. Anywhere from here to here is the best place to break the balls from. You don't really want to break from here because you want to get kind of a push and have a chance for more balls. It doesn't matter if you hit it super hard. You want to get a solid hit like that and straight on it. In trick shot, the setup is very important, and then having somebody obviously show you how to, how to shoot it. Come on, baby. I think we got it. <laughs>